Uh, I was invited to a party one day. I went to the party. This was in the Bronx. A couple of guys said, uh, "Hey, listen, we, in, you know, you're looking for a girl or something. You're looking for a good time. We got some uh, friends that meet in a park nearby." So I went over to the park and uh, we went deep into the woods. This was Pelham Bay Park in the Bronx, and they had like a small fire going, and a lot of people were drinking. They were singing. Uh, they had some people were chanting. And I says, well, what is this, you know? And I began to meet some of the people, and they says, oh, well, you know, we're pagans. We're witches, and we just have a good, we come out here to have a good time. But they were the ones that introduced me to uh, Satanism. We had circles, we had the pentagrams that they made right there in the woods, in the high weeds, in the swampy area. And uh, we would just call upon the different powers. They said, call upon these angels. Later on, I found out that these were really demons that we were calling upon. But I would do these rituals and, and meditate, and you, you could feel the surge of energy come upon you. Things began to change. Here's a statement by David Barrowitz himself in his unrecorded in Dr. Ken Olson's book called Exorcism. This is page 85. At one time, I was a member of an occult group. Being sworn to secrecy or death, I cannot reveal the name of the group, nor do I wish to. This group contained a mixture of satanic practices, including the teachings of Aleister Crowley and the life is Levi. And he mentions Aleister Crowley, one of the most famous magicians in the world. And I want you to take note of the symbols we see here. We see the pentagram or the five-point star in the circle right here in the book. Obviously, a black magic witchcraft book. And then on his head, what does he have? The six-point star with the triangle in the middle and then the eye of Ra in the middle of that. Now, the six-point star can also be called the star of Saturn. And then the triangle is 60 degrees in each corner, triple six. And then the eye of Ra representing spirit travel or astral projecting, a.k.a. Kabbalah. This is Conspiracies, Cover-Ups, and Crimes from JFK to the CIA Terrorist Connection by Jonathan Vankin. Page 287. Crawley himself was terribly decadent. A happily heroin, heroin addict, bisexual saint worshiper, he asked people to call him the Beast 666. Crawley believed that he was literally the anti-messiah of the apocalypse. Magic and Theory and Practice by Aleister Crawley. And he says when he puts a K at the end of magic, it stands for black magic. Page 96. But the bloody sacrifice, though more dangerous, is more efficacious, and for nearly all purposes, human sacrifice is best. Page 95, the last sentence, he says, A male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most satisfactory and suitable victim. This is by Bob Larson, Satanism, the Seduction of America's Youth. Page 153. During the First World War, Crawley transferred his activities to America. The press proclaimed him the wickedest man in the world. He also spent time in Italy, but was expelled because Italian authorities accused his disciples of sacrificing human infants in occult rituals. That's where I left off. It was and is totally blood-oriented, and I am certain you know just what I mean. The Coven's doctrines are a blend of ancient Judaism, the secret orders of the Golden Dawn, black magic, and take note, black magic with a K, and a host of other unlawful, obnoxious, obnoxious practices. Now here's a movie about ancient Judaism and sun worship, and they show you that they practice sex magic in cemeteries, and they offer human sacrifices during the summer solstice to their god, or their sun god, Nueda, no different than Tammuz. In Ezekiel 8, it exposes the summer solstice ritual to Tammuz. This movie is called The Wicker Man, and this is more like a documentary about the ancient Judas, the ancient Druids. And you see here, this is a six-point star, just like Alistair Crowley had on his hat, commonly known as the Star of Saturn. Exposed in Acts 743 in the Bible. And you're doing it for nothing! Killing me will bring back your goddamn honey! But I know it will! Oh, oh. 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 I'm not one of you! I don't believe in your gods! I don't believe in sacrifice! Oh, 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 oh. Ah! I'm my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! He mentioned the Golden Dawn, so here's the three founders of the Golden Dawn, one being Dr. William Robert Woodman, one of the three co-founders of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. And all these people that are mentioned have one thing in common, that they're all Freemasons. Clearly, you can see that he's a Freemason, wearing a Freemason apron. Have William Wynn Westcott, who was a coroner. Think about that, a coroner. He's an occultist and he's a coroner. 
ceremonial magician, theosophist, and Freemason. Born in Leamington, Warwickshire, England, he was a Supreme Magist Chief of the SRIA and went on to co-found the Golden Dawn. Now this is the SI, SRIA. Right? It's, it's a Rosicrucian esoteric Christian order formed by Robert Wentworth Little in 1865. Now if you believe you're, this is a Christian order, obviously you don't know what's going on. You need to do some research. Although some sources acknowledge the date to be 1866 and 67, members are confirmed from the ranks of subscribing Master Masons of the Grand Lodge in enmity with the United Grand Lodge of England. Now if you know about the United Grand Lodge of England, it's like one of the, most, the, one of the top lodges in England. Very important lodge to these people. And the third one is Samuel Liddell McGregor Mathers. Born Samuel Liddell Mathers was a British occultist. He is primarily known as one of the founders of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a ceremonial magic order of which offshoots still exist to this day. He became so synonymous with the order that the Golden Dawn scholar Israel Regadi observed in retrospect that the Golden Dawn was McGregor Mathers. And here he is in a Egyptian outfit performing a ritual to Isis. You can see the the leopard or cheetah skin thrown over his shoulder, like found in some papyrus. Ended off is Gerald Gardner, who they consider to be the king of the witches, and who started Gardenian witchcraft, or Gardenian Wicca. So I remember that David mentioned that he was part of a Wiccan cult, or met some Wiccans. Now I found this about Gerald Gardner on the internet. It says, he's talking about witchcraft. He decided to revive the faith, supplementing the covenant rituals with the ideas borrowed from the Freemasonry, ceremonial magic, and the writings of Alistair Crowley to form the Gardenian tradition of Wicca. And he was a friend of Alistair Crowley. You can look that up. No, last paragraph. To break away completely is impossible because of a pact each new member signs in his own blood. Also, each new and carefully screened recruit supplies a picture of all his family plus their addresses. These items are used, if necessary, as tools for blackmail. Courage. When I got involved with Satanism, I mean, I wish I had known from the beginning how far this thing would have gone. As unbelievable as it sounds, what started as animal sacrifices, began, people began to talk about making human sacrifices. And I never knew at the beginning that this stuff was going to result in murder.